can a reseller make money thrifting from the Goodwill Boutique? If you are new here, I'd like to welcome you to my channel, Texas Gal Treasures. My name is Margaret, and with my partner Juan, we share all the different ways we are making a full-time living as resellers. We sell everything from jewelry and vintage items to furniture and appliances that we pick up from garage sales, thrift stores, estate sales, storage lockers, and even free sites to bring in an income. So if you are interested in learning the tricks of the trade, what to pick up and where to sell it, make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell so you're notified when we put out new videos. And if you're interested, also follow us on social media, Instagram, and Facebook at Texas Gal Treasures. If you have never been to a Goodwill boutique before, basically what it is it's an upscale goodwill store where they bring in supposedly higher-end items and they definitely sell them for a higher-end price now the goodwill boutique that we went to they had some name brand things but they weren't necessarily any more high-end stuff than you would find in a regular goodwill or thrift store so i i surprisingly found one thing that i kind of wish that i picked up that i didn't uh, but let's take a look at the things that I picked up while we were there, things that I would have normally considered picking up if I was at a regular Goodwill with even the regular Goodwill, some of them higher prices, um, and talk about like what kind of profits could have been made or not and what I would have liked my price point to have been as far as buying in on some of these items at the Goodwill Boutique. I'd love to hear your stories of visiting a Goodwill boutique down in the comment section. So the first thing that catches my eye is this Indiana, what appears to be Indiana glass green frog votive. And they want, wait for it, $16.50 for this green glass uh, votive candle holder. Insane. Okay, insane. I mean, I know that the Goodwill Boutique is not there for us resellers to make money, but even at that, the solds on eBay are like $8, $10. There's one here for the frog and the turtle that are 18 bucks. So as you can see, I mean, right around the $10, $15 range, this is something that I'm actually surprised it doesn't sell for more. Now, this being something that I would normally pick up, say, if I saw it at a garage sale, like for a, a buck or less, uh, because, yeah, even on eBay, if, it, if it's selling for $10, $15, I don't just sell on eBay. And so I don't always go just off of the eBay sold prices. I know a lot of people really base their pricing system off of that, which, you know, more power to them. But because I sell on multiple platforms, let's say a person doesn't like buying things on eBay and they want to buy from Mercari or Etsy they uh, might be selling for a higher price on a different platform. So I also like to look, so I'll do a Google search for the item and I'll look at the shopping section so that I can get a cross section of all different uh, sites and what it's being sold for. I know it's not sold yet, but I can see what types of listings are up there and what kind of prices. So, <clears throat> pardon me. Um, so I'm seeing like it's about $20, say on Etsy, even a $34 one over on Mercari. So there's a few different ones that are up for a little bit higher priced. So this is something that normally I would have picked up for a, do a dollar or so and then probably listed for around $20. But with the price tag being 16, about 16.50 there at the Goodwill boutique there was no way that i could pick this item up to flip for a profit because even after time fees etc it's i wouldn't have made not even 50 cents which no not gonna do it so the next thing that i saw that really caught my eye was this octopus ring holder now i this is one that i kind of wish i picked up because on further reflection when i went and started doing some research there are not as many octopus ring holders as I thought there might be. And at first I thought, well, 350 is a bit steep, 
But when I went to go and look, actually, I saw some gold and chromed ones for in the $20 range. And I only really found one or two that were that cream off-white color. One was around $18 can, in Canadian dollars. And then the other was on a site that wasn't like a reseller type of site. And it was $9. Um, and so I kind of wish that maybe I'd gotten it. Because even at $350, if I had listed it for $29, that's a really good uh, return on investment there. A good 17 to 20 dollar profit depending on the fees and the platform etc so i kind of wish that that's one that i picked up i usually like picking up figural items it's one of my things i talk about a lot because there's there is a an animal lover and most people they have their favorite animal and so they people like to buy things for them say frogs or octopus or tigers or alligators or what have you um so figural items tend to sell pretty well and so that is one of the things that I kind of regret not picking up. It's a little more, um, a little more expensive than I like to spend. I'm pretty, I like to spend the lowest amount possible um, on items. It's just the way I operate. All right, so let's take a look at the next item. The next items that caught my eye were these tiki, I guess they're statues. They were just decor, but I really thought they were cool looking with their metallic uh, paint on them. And when I started looking at them, I realized there's a, a word written on them and it was unbelievable. And um, yeah, no, I, I couldn't find, I couldn't find them anywhere. I did find the phrase unbelievable, like a touristy souvenir type thing. Um, but I never found those. I left them behind. When I picked up the first one, I saw the $16.50 price tag on it. And then when I picked up the red one, I noticed that it was for the pair of them. But that still placed them at around $8 each. And knowing that, you know, tiki people are really particular about their tiki items and this looking like more of a souvenir type thing, I uh, left this one behind. Let me know what you think about that. I don't collect tiki stuff and I don't fully understand the whole aesthetics of it but I have a feeling that the metallicness would take away but I could be wrong I don't know maybe you're into like tiki disco is that a thing if not maybe we can make it a thing and those would be great for your your tiki disco hut would you call it a hut T tiki disco tech I don't know. The next item I pick up, I love selling mugs, you know, and this one was a really cute Minnie Mouse mug. However, they wanted $4.29 for it, and there's no way on this planet that I'm going to spend $4.29 on a mug unless it's going to sell for like $30 plus, maybe $25. I mean, it would have to bring a really good return for me to spend almost 5 bucks on a mug. Now, this particular mug I saw up for sale for about $15, $16. There's one over on Mercari up for sale for about $25. Now, there are Mickey and Minnie Mouse mugs that do sell. Maybe just that particular one wasn't a good hit. So there are some that can sell for anywhere from $20 to $30, depending on the subject matter and depending on the character. So it is worth looking up. But generally, I don't particularly like to spend more than a dollar on a mug unless I am absolutely positive that it's something that is going to bring a really good return on investment. So this Minnie Mouse mug stayed right there. Next up is this really sweet topsy-turvy doll. If you don't know what these are, it's a doll that you can, it's kind of like a storyteller doll that you can uh, flip inside out and turn around and they'll have different characters on it. Usually they're from fairy tales. Uh, and sometimes, I've sold a number of these, and sometimes they can go for a lot of money, particularly Madame Alexander uh, topsy-turvy dolls. This is a Cinderella. I could not find this exact one. And on closer inspection, I don't actually see a price on this doll, but it's kind of in rough shape. Her hair's all messed up, and there was some things that I was going to have to repair uh, as far as her dress. So I decided to leave this one behind, but I wanted to show you some of the different topsy-turvy dolls that are out there and what kind of things you can expect when you pick them up. Now, they are kind of all over the board as far as how much they can go for, uh, depending on what the story is, the, the, the condition of the dolls, and who makes them. Uh, so here's a little Red Riding Hood one that is uh, sold for $24. 
$4. Here's a couple of Disney Parks one that, that sold for anywhere between, you know, $15 and $20. And this Clara Topsy Turvy one from the Nutcracker sold for $25. And as you can see, some of the vintage ones can also sell for a really, really good profit. So it definitely is worth it if you find a Topsy Turvy doll to take a look at it and see if it's something that might be worth picking up to resell. Now again, depending if it's going to sell for about $30, I might be willing to spend up to $5 if it's in really great shape. Now if it's only going to sell for about $15, I probably wouldn't spend more than a buck or two on it. The next item that catches my eye is this little alabaster owl. Now again, it falls into that category that I love to pick up, which are figural items and animals because people really like to buy things like that for themselves and for people that they care about for gifts. And this one they wanted a little over $6 for, which depending on what it would sell for, it might not have been a bad pickup, but when I started doing some research, there were really a lot of these on the different platforms. So these alabaster owls apparently came from Barnes and Noble. So here's one that's up for 11 bucks. Here's some other ones that aren't the Barnes and Noble ones, but a pair of them were up for $12. This was really surprising to me. So here's another one that's up for 25, which, you know, that's not too bad, but again, um, so, it, I mean, as you can see, it's kind of all over the place, but generally the ones that I was finding repeatedly were more like, here's one that sold for $3.25. They were more in that lower end range, you know, $5, $3. This one was $14.99. So if it was something that I picked up for a dollar or so, sure, you know, I would probably have listed it for $15, $20 and just waited for the right buyer to come along. Now, generally I do pick up things with owls on it because they are pretty popular. Um, so here's a little brass owl. I actually have one almost exactly like this that I just listed. This one's uh, sold for $30. Here are some really pretty glass ones that sold for $18.99. And look at this guy. Oh, he's an angry, angry horned owl. And he is sold for $17.95. This one was, look, a, a handmade owl statue, wooden, and this one sold for $60. So it totally depends on the subject matter, the material it's made from, the quality, uh, because they can really sell for a good profit. This little cute one sold for $20. And then this eagle owl on books sold for $35. Pretty cool. Look at this one, Odigiri. Odigiri is a really good brand to pick up, and this one sold for $35. So the next thing that caught my eye was the Kangol brand because that's something that brings me back. Uh, this hat though, they wanted like $17.49 oh, for it, which was way more than I was willing to spend on it. This is something that maybe I would have picked up for a couple bucks at a garage sale. Um, yeah, there were two sold similar to this one that were up on eBay, one that sold for about $13 and the other it sold for about $21. And uh, yeah, so for that price, $17.49, there was no way to make a profit. So it was more like things at this Goodwill Boutique were maybe for people wanting to shop for themselves and maybe they thought they could get better things that were you wouldn't have to weed through so much other stuff. I'm not exactly sure. Now this last item I really kind of wish I picked up. I do not sell a lot of clothes, but this, uh, these pants, these like stretchy pants were from Corey Page Designs and they were UT. They had the, the Bevo on it and all these fun, like everything's bigger in Texas, fun like sayings on them. So they would have really been a good pair of leggings that someone would have liked to wear to a UT game or something like that. And when I went to look, I didn't find a single pair out there. The only thing that I found sold from Corey Page Designs were these striped pants on eBay for $35. And when I did a little more digging, there were a few other Corey Page Designs out there, some pajamas that sold, they were, no, they were up for $63. And then there were a few other university patterns that were made into leggings and pants on some other sites that were around anywhere from $35 to $50. So being from Texas, and living in Austin, where UT is, I really feel like I should have picked those pants up and I probably would have listed them for, now on further reflection, I probably would have listed them for around 60 or $70, even though some of these other ones were only up for maybe $50 or less, 35 to $50. 
come on y'all, it's UT. <laughs> so I think they really would have done pretty well. So that was my regret on that one. I could have made a nice $50 profit, 40, 50 bucks on those pants, but I did not get them. Let me know any stories you have from visiting the Goodwill Boutique. And if you've ever found anything that you could have flipped for a good profit there, or if your experiences have just been walk in, big eyes, walk out. And I'll talk to you on the next one. Thanks, guys. Bye.